What's up, nerds? I'm Jake. And I'm Fat Mohawk Storm. Indeed he is. It happens. It's unfortunate, but it does happen. It does. This week, we're going to give you our top 10 favorite storylines and graphic novels from comic books. Do some fan fiction. And last but not least, welcome to the Wizard's Wagon. The Wizard's Wagon. Hey guys, I'm going to be covering our, my top 10 list for the top 10 graphic novels. This is a couple of ground rules for you that we uh, decided on on this particular instance. Uh, we're only going to do one storyline per character and no manga at all. Sorry, we're just leaving that out in this case. We know there's a lot of really good storylines for that. Not in this case, we're just leaving those out. We'll do another episode for that one, so just to let you know. And also, for some of the, I'm sure, hate comments I'm going to get for some of my picks, these were more based on my personal enjoyment more than anything else. So I just kind of want to throw that out there as well so you don't get the wrong idea as far as I know Batman's a great storyline. He's not on my list. I'm just telling you that now. Sorry. Deal with it. I'm not DC. I'm not Batman. I do have some. But not covering that today. So I'm going to start on number 10 here and some of these I'm going to kind of gloss over pretty quickly because actually most of the list I'm going to gloss over pretty quickly because we're kind of um, familiar with some of these storylines and characters already. Um, the top two I'm actually going to cover a little bit more in depth just to kind of get my reasoning behind why I picked the ones I did and then Logan will be back on here with his list even though we don't agree. Number 10 is 300. I'm going to move up from that to number 9 to Wanted which was a couple of great films so far already on the list, and you already know the stories behind those, so not delving into those. Number eight, Sin City. Number seven, Watchmen. Again, two more stories that were also converted into film, so a lot of people know those already. Number six, Marvel Zombies. I love Marvel Zombies. Just great, awesome storytelling. Number five, Hellblazer. Now that is, for comic book heads out there, you already know who that is. For non-comic book heads, that was actually converted into Constantine for film. So again, already turned into film. You're kind of very familiar with it, so we're going to move on. Number four, Civil War. Obviously, that's coming out here soon. Number three, V for Vendetta. I absolutely love both the story and the film in this case. They did a great translation on that, so I'm not really going to delve into it. So my number two and number one picks. Number two, Secret Wars, Marvel. It was such an in-depth story. Um, it was, I mean, this is the classic Secret Wars I'm picking on this one, not the newer version. Um, I mean, just the writing on this was so ridiculously awesome that I can't even describe it. I very, very much enjoyed the storyline. And my number one pick, which a lot of people forget about the fact that it was actually a graphic novel in the first place, was The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. You take every classical fictionary character in history and you throw them into one big mix and tell a complete story around it and it's just good all the way around. I don't care who you are. I mean, the fact that you didn't have to actually come up with superpowers or anything else for these guys, I mean, it's it's just a great mix all together. So that's my picks. We're, Logan's going to have a little bit of a different opinion, which is okay, I guess. But... Uh, we're going to cover that here in just a second, so he'll be right back. What's up, guys? Logan here. I'm going to give you my top ten of my favorite storylines and graphic novels from comic books. We already heard Jake's. I may not agree with his list, but he's entitled to his opinion. Starting off at number ten, we got V for Vendetta. Coming in at number nine, we've got Deadpool vs. the Marvel Universe. Number eight, we've got Marvel Zombies. At number seven... We've got the new version of Secret Wars. Coming in at six, we've got the Avengers versus the X-Men. Number five, we've got Civil War. Coming in at number four, we've got Death of Superman. Number three, we've got Old Man Logan. Coming in at number two, we've got The Watchmen. Watchmen makes number two on my list simply because it's one of the best written graphic novels of all time. Alan Moore is a genius when it comes to his writing style. And movie, I love the movie, personally. Uh, the comic, the graphic novel is about 10,000 times better than the movie. If you get the chance to read it, sit down and read it. It's a great read. 
and it's a great time to sit down and have a good one-on-one -on -one with that book. And my number one graphic novel comic book storyline of all time is The Dark Knight Returns. Unfortunately, I can only put one Batman novel on here. I'm a huge Batman fan, unlike Jake. But The Dark Knight Returns is pretty much Frank Miller's best work in comic books, in my opinion. It takes the story of an old Bruce Wayne going up against mutants, going up against Superman, going up against the government. And it is very well written. If you started off with, that would be a good death, but not good enough. There's no really other way to top that introduction into that book and everything that follows. So that's going to be my top 10 list of the best graphic novels and comic book storylines. I want to hear your guys' opinion. Give us your top 10 in the comments. Let us know how you feel. Thanks very much. Hey guys, just wanted to throw a quick thank you out to the Wizard's Wagon. They were letting us shoot on location inside of their store, so thank you very much for that. Thanks, guys. Uh, we love it. It's nerd heaven. So, we did want to tell you to come on down and check them out as well. They're on 6372 Delmar here in St. Louis. Come check them out in the loop. They've got all the wonderful new nerdtastic comics, your little heart desires. And you can come check them out, buy some cool stuff, gaming, comics. It's right up your alley because it's right up ours. Candyland. Candyland for grown men and kids alike. More grown men than kids. I'm more kid than grown men. Well, yeah, I know. That's why I said that. Yeah, but yeah, come check them out. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to our new segment called Fan Fiction. Now, what this is is where we go take a look at different comic book and sci-fi movies and give our opinion on what should have happened and what would have made the movies better in our opinion. Our opinion. Our opinion. So, don't hate us. Please? Please? Anyway, the first one we're going to be covering, since we are shooting in a brand new location, a comic shop, The Wizard's Wagon, we're going to be covering the culmination of Christopher Nolan's Bat Trilogy. I'm going to talk about The Dark Knight Rises. Because he is a Batman geek, and that's what he likes. I'm not a Batman boy. We've discussed this. Quiet, you. Anyway... What that consists of is, for one, we need to change out the main villain. The military action in this movie doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Bane, especially from the nature that he takes over Gotham for, what, six months at a time? Seems a little odd to me when Bane, usually hopped up on Venom, is a very intelligent person, and he has militaristic action in him, and he's a guerrilla fighter. This seemed more mainstream military to me, to kind of cut off their supply, things of that nature, blowing the bridges. It makes more sense for this film to have Deathstroke as his main villain, rather than Bane. That's one thing I would definitely change, and we wouldn't have to hear Tom Hardy talk all funny for the entire movie, which is also a plus. Which is more like Sean Connery on Helium. Either way you look at it, good. it was a weird voice. Another thing I would change is, for one, Batman doesn't talk like Batman when he's by himself. That was weird to me. Did anybody else find that odd? So that's what that's like. You're alone, dude. It's fine. You don't have to talk like Batman. You know you're Bruce. It's, you don't have to tell nobody's around. It's okay. It's okay. Let it go. It's fine. Please. Other things I would change is Batman takes way too much time to essentially let people know that Batman's here. He paints an entire gasoline bat on a building, which seemed odd to me. And While people are on the verge of dying, let me remind you of that. They're on the verge of death, walking out onto this ice. You would think that would take a lot of time to do something. And Batman's like, I and see what you're doing. Give me like 20 minutes. I gotta do this real quick. I'll be back. Don't die yet. I'm coming back for you. It just seemed weird to me. The whole Catwoman story arc was okay, I guess. At the same time, you didn't play Catwoman up as enough of a thief. You made her too emotionally invested in Bruce without giving it a real reason. If the first time she meets him is when she's stealing his mother's jewelry, it's a little odd to me that that first meeting culminates in them running off to France together. In the books, they fall in love during the long Halloween storyline, which is a long played out thing. It takes place over an entire year of building that relationship. It seems odd to build it in a sense of, Hey, I just met you. This is crazy, but I'm Catwoman. Let's get married. It's just odd to me. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You to really just reference I that did. Song? I did. Please never do that. Again. I won't because never? it came off weird to me too. But other things I would change from this are completely eliminate the League of Shadows from this movie. If you get rid of Bane and bring in Deathstroke, for one, Bane has nothing to do with the League of Shadows as it is. So it seems kind of odd that they shoehorn that in there to kind of bring Liam Neeson back to play Raish and to kind of shoehorn in Talia Al Ghul into the story where she didn't belong. If you've already got the one love interest in Catwoman, which wasn't good, don't bring in a second love interest that also wasn't good when the actor playing it has no chemistry with either female lead. It felt way too forced and didn't make a lot of sense. Eliminate the female lead from the movie 
and just go straight in. It's the last of Nolan's trilogy. Tell the Batman story. Don't focus as much on Bruce Wayne's personal life because Gotham's in sh a sham. It's wreckage everywhere. We don't need to know what Bruce is doing in his free time. He needs to be Batman all the time. And last, but certainly not least, we need to completely get rid of the backbreaking scene. Did you know that if I broke your back, all I would have to do was punch you twice in the spine and just leave you for a couple minutes? You'd be fine. Yes. You can scale the side of a building and get out of this horrible, what is supposed to be the Lazarus Pit, which is, I don't even get me started on that. I could spend 20 minutes talking about how odd it was that the Lazarus Pit was prison. But get rid of the whole thing with the guy healing him magically by punching him in the broken <laughs> spine. Think about this for a second. Just, just let me hit you really hard. Turn around. Right. This... This is healing motion. That's how we fix each other. I'm good now. See, he's, he's it's like a chiropractor. Exactly. He's perfectly I'm, I'm healthy because I punched him in his spine. But those are the things I would change about The Dark Knight Rises to try and, I guess, make it more watchable. Yeah, it, I mean, it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't just, bad, but it wasn't good. No. If I you're mean, coming off of The Dark Knight where you got Ledger's Joker, which was unbelievable, just foray into that character that we haven't seen, that dark edge to him. You had Gangster Joker with Jack Nicholson. You had Goofy Joker back in the day. And now you've got Jared Leto playing Gangster Joker. Not Gangster, Gangsta. Yeah, There's which I, I'm still apprehensive about. Just I'm excited because it's a new take on the character. But to go from Heath Ledger's Joker into Tom Hardy's Bane, where he talks like this for the entire movie, it just seems like an odd way to go. If you were going to do that, it needed to be two and end on Ledger's Joker. Ledger's Joker, for me, is the end of that series. Because what they did after, in my mind, just didn't happen because... That went from a 10-star movie to a 2-star movie, if you're comparing the two. I give it two bad nipples out of 10, personally. But that's yeah. our, or at least my opinion, on how yeah. I would have changed it. And if it seems like I'm a little bit quiet over here, that's because I am. He, he, he kind of felt the need to vent on this one, so I kind of let him have at it. So I will be more um, commentation, you know, balanced. Commentating. Commentating. There we yeah. go. I'll, I'll be commentating more on future videos. But uh, <laughs> Batman's more his forte, and I really hate Batman. So anything is not good as far as I'm concerned. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to that next time. But, you know, we want to know what you guys can think about his little uh, spielio he just gave here as far as how that Batman movie should have ended and should have been made. Please comment. And it's like. Below. Like the video, guys. You can do it. What else should they do? Share it. Because sharing is caring. And we care about you. And also subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Nerd Bites. We'll see you next week.